A Bush ID LCD 26 TV 27 HD. Um, problem with it is um, when you turn it on, you will uh, very intermittently, and I've not been able to catch this. Uh, it only happened once um, uh, initially when I brought it in the first time, but now it is working. But um, we switch it on and power it up. And you see we got uh, video information coming up there but when it's in the default uh, condition and um, you would that's all you see even though you would have a, a, a signal and you would see nothing the only thing you might get through is the backlight if you press that you'll see uh, if it was dark enough in here uh, you would see the backlight appear when you just press it lightly with the uh, with your hands and uh, if you look around the back of the unit you can see the backlight is on um, through the holes at the back of the screen. The unit has a, a 17 MB12 uh, chassis video uh, processing PCB in it and a 17 PW22 4 power supply in it. And uh, my next step really is uh, um, because the units are already open, I normally would have a look around and see if there's any loose connections. And I've ruled that out already. There's no loose connections. My next step then is um, straight into looking at the, the schematic of the, um, the pins coming out of the um, main video processor uh, up to the actual control logic PCB, which is mounted behind the screen here. It's a square little PCB. And I want to look at the voltages and I want to look at the grounds and uh, the video inputs in sorry the vi video outputs of the video processor board and uh, see what's happening i have the tv on test now for about a day or so um, and off camera i've been doing a few checks and um, i'm still finding it very hard to get the picture to go and um, very intermittently it might go for a brief second doesn't give me enough time to do any checks when it's in the faulty mode um, but what I have been doing off camera is around the connector um, of the LVDS that's the uh, where all the video information comes out with the signal board that's the big board that's on the uh, that's mounted on the screen um, goes up to the actual control logic board that's on the actual screen itself and that control logic board has to be powered up as well as the main signal board and uh, being a Vestel uh, manufacturer um, they do have different variations of the same chassis this is a 17 MB 12 chassis but if you look at these connect connectors uh, some of them might be connected and some of them might not be connected it's very hard to know what's what um, um, on the uh, the actual um, unit you're working on. What I've been doing uh, off camera is I've been checking the voltages on this and then hoping when at some time it will go faulty. And I'll just get you the list of the voltages I actually found on this uh, particular um, uh, 26 inch uh, bush unit on pin one is, pin one is not connected pin three i'm getting zero volts pins five are getting zero volts pin seven is not connected on this particular one pin nine i'm getting five volts 11 five volts uh, 13 15 17 and 19 is not connected 21 I'm getting 3 volts 23 and 25 not connected as you see here and 27 and 29 I've got 5 volts um, in a working condition now what I've done then was I wanted to make sure then I had good grounds uh, because if you had a, one of these grounds not good um, 
you would have a possibility of uh, some of the control logic board going down as well, just like if it missed a, uh, if there was a voltage missing. So I've been checking these here and I'm getting on each one of these a reading of below 50 millivolts uh, on that, on all these ground connections on the LVDS cable. If I see one of those rising um, above that 50 millivolts, it might indicate I've got a ground problem. Um, or if it even goes lower, it might mean that I've got a connector problem up with the screen. Um, because there'll be no current flow, so hence there'll be no voltage drop. Um, there's always a voltage drop, even on a ground. Uh, if you read on the ground, there's always some kind of a, a voltage reading if there's current flow. If there's no current flow, you normally read, read you know, a very, you might see zero volts. Mind you, zero, zero volts is very hard to get on a, a, a meter that uh, displays very low voltage. Um, I don't know if I said it all right. Uh, the, connector is PL404 and you'll see it's the lead that goes up to the screen. I, I would take uh, it apart and take the, uh, this, uh, take it uh, completely apart but once you disturb it this fault might never appear uh, until it gets back to the customs house and a month down the road he's going to be back to me with it and uh, not very happy. So um, he said he's He's not waiting on the unit, he has another one there when, when, it's, uh, when I'm testing it. He knows this is a bit of a problem uh, repair. I've been running the unit now for a couple of days and no fault appeared on it until this morning and I had a blank raster. And it gave me time to do a few checks on the uh, connector um, here, the LVDS connector um, on the main PCB to the logic control board. And what I found was all my supplies were present and all my outputs were on that pin. And uh, I'll just give you a few pin outs of it. I also had information, video information on that. Um, on that uh, connector. And uh, I wrote down just uh, what was on that connector because the uh, uh, diagram is very... Um, is all over the place. Uh, we go up here to 9 and 11, we had our 5 volts, and then I went up here to number 21 that had 3 volts on it, and up here in 27 and 29, both at 5 volts in default condition. All my grounds are okay, and what I had to do then was I just went on to um, the video outputs, which are these ones here with no, I have no writing on them, but I know they're uh, outputs for uh, video information. Uh, it goes up to the logic control board, which that information then is converted into something that the screen can use. Um, there was information there, and I will show you on the oscilloscope and um, on the actual connector where I'm going with it. Uh, let's see. As you see. On the oscilloscope, we got uh, video information coming out of the main signal board. And let me see if I get that on my other camera. I show my hand in, in the way. And let me see if we zoom in a bit. And That's the two pins connect, and um, that's pin 28 and 26. Um, I'll show all the information. The next one is skipped, that's ground. Next one, should be video information. Next one should be ground. Which one should be video information? And the next one should be video information. But you can go all the way up there and all the information is there. Um, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to have to take all this off and have a look at the connector for the LVDS cable. It goes up in the back of the screen first. Make sure that that's not dirty. 
um, if that was dirty, it might um, you might lose one of the five volt supplies and the three volt supplies to the actual uh, uh, logic control board itself. Uh, the other thing is, it could be uh, a chip on the control board with a dry joint. Um, that's my next step. Anyway, to take the screen apart and have a look. I've taken all the screws off the uh, the side of this frame. This frame here, they're all loose now, and uh, disconnected the speaker cables from the white and the blue sockets here on the top right hand corner of the main PCB. Then I, what I did was I took disconnected the cable from here and that shook back down underneath the power supply. And then also I also had to remove the uh, supply, the plug that goes onto the inverter board here. The inverter board that goes up that way. And that's normally covered with um, a glue, uh, like a hot melt glue. And it's very hard to remove. Um, so it was easier to take it from the power supply up here, just pull it out of the power supply and shove it back down here. Also, I had to take um, this um, control lead off. Uh, that goes on to here. That's off. So there's my speakers and my control board out of the way. My mains. And I took the two screws out of this uh, Control uh, local uh, control keypad, and uh, I should be ready now to lift. I'll put this out of the way somewhat. What we have here is the screen, the rear, end, rear end of the screen, and the screen type is V two six zero B one dash L zero one rev. Uh, uh, C1 and I'm looking at it here. I don't know if you're getting it or not uh, the shot. There's the glue on this It's okay, which you'd normally just get a sharp knife to do that, but it's just easier to pull it out from this end and there's also glue on the control board as well. It's the control logic board. Underneath this screen and cam. And the glue, if you notice there, it's cut evenly. And someone's had this out before. Okay, I'm going to just take that out of the way. I'm going to also clean that. Sometimes they get tarnished in there and they give all sorts of weird uh, colour effects uh, on the screen. And uh, clean them, sometimes we get them going. But other times you have to replace the cable itself, it just doesn't uh, do the job. There's four screws hold the screen and can on. Uh, I don't know if you're getting this or not. I'll have to get a screen, a large screen on the wall so I can actually see what the camera is seeing. And we have one little tab here. Is there a tab on it? Lift them up carefully without breaking. And then this here is your control logic board. And this funny markings, let me see. Markings on the board V60, sorry, V260, V1 C01. I'm going to have a look and see if I've got one of them. And I also going to check this um, board, see can I see any uh, poorly soldered joints or anything like that? Because this is what the problem looks like. A poor, um, uh, 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 um, like it's intermittently happening, and it's very, very intermittently. I've resoldered uh, the PCB, all the solder joints that I could find on that. Uh, uh, control logic PCB. Um, I could not find anything that obviously looked like um, a toy joint and uh, all I can do now is put it on test to see because uh, 
something had to be loose because the minute I touched um, the TV at all, the screen would come back on. Um, it could be a heat related problem as well and it's just uh, happen just so happens when I'm touching it it's just got hot enough to make it work this is the other problem I also cleaned off that um, LVDS cable where it goes onto the control logic board at the screen end and um, yeah, I normally use some uh, isopropanol alcohol and uh, uh, just spray it out and then just use a, a, a soft brush a um, small soft brush to brush it out any of the contaminants might have got in there and uh, I, I do it on the connector end as well be gentle with the connector end because they are very, they are very flimsy and if you're soldering they with a hot air uh, rework station don't melt it whatever you do um, but what we can do now is uh, let it run and uh, for the next week or so and see what happens because uh, this is how intermittent this problem is it could work for four or five days I come out here, switch it on, and it's not working in the morning time. But equally, I could come back here later on in the evening when it's warmed up after a couple of days, and it and it could be a blank screen as well. So it's it's I can't uh, isolate it to being a problem either being cold or hot. Um, bear in mind all the temperatures here at the moment. Uh, it is uh, the middle of summer, and uh, we've got about twenty five degrees outside, scorching, going through a little bit of a heat wave in there and uh, that could be a factor as well because uh, it's not really getting cold in the uh, um, the uh I have the unit on test now for about three or four days and unfortunately uh, the resolving of that logic control board uh, uh, was not successful and what I'm going to do now is this is first thing in the morning here and uh, normally that is when it's more uh, prevalent and normally if I, I, I switch it on during the day anytime this the, the picture information is there so I'm just going to power it up and see what happens this this first switch on in the morning it might show a picture or it mightn't show a picture and as you see we have no picture at the moment and uh, let's see can we get it to come on and just touching the television makes it come back I find it's very hard to isolate it to any particular area and uh, the video information even when you've got a blank screen is actually on the output of that LVDS cable going up to the screen and all the voltage is there um, and the information is moving you know when you've got a moving image you'll see that information moving so in theory then you should see that moving image on the screen uh, if the main board was just given out a black image and I can see the way that's starting to go white now and that is all the symptoms Ooh. I've seen that before I've seen that with tabs on the screen more so than the control logic board now that is the first time now I've had that and uh, let's see will flex it do it any good this could be a case of uh, the tabs on the screen could be gone as you can see now it's starting to get brighter and this is looking more like a, a, the tabs on the screen itself this this symptom I didn't have before and I'm now just pressing the uh, the main board itself see what it make the fall come and go no it doesn't it's more when I do this you can see it okay well I'll investigate further when I get that control logic board um, and uh, if it's still there I'm afraid it's going to be the screen and while there is fixes out there for the tabs um, I found anytime I've done it 
it hasn't been very successful. It came back after about three or four months. The exact same. There's uh, there's little um the tabs are not soldered. Um there are little wires that go from that control logic board down to the screen and it's like a plastic ribbon cable and it's bonded to the screen. It's not soldered and that bonding breaks down. And uh, while you could send it off to a specialist co company that would rebond them, it's just too pricey. For a 26 inch television, you're not gonna do that. Uh, that'd be more for a large screen that uh, would, would cost a lot of money to replace. I've decided to strip down the screen and have a look and uh, pursue the uh, problem a little bit closer. Um, I'm hoping it's not the screen. Uh, what I found on the old LCD control logic board is a lot of contamination inside here. Now this could be contamination left from flux that I didn't see uh, after resoldering it. Um, which would explain why it were, uh, the fault all of a sudden came into it and wasn't there before. Um, so that fault might not be related to the original blank screen fault. Um, but um, it did go blank before that problem with the white screen and the uh, the smearing of the screen it did go blank uh, like a dark screen once um, during the week so i know that the problem wasn't sorted so what i've done is i got another control logic board and it's normally covered with this screening can i've taken it off and i've bolted these back in place what i'm going to do now is i'm going to push a uh, my main PCB back on here, bolt it in temporarily. Got the router cables first. screw here. I'm just going to stick them in so you can find a spot for them. If it will, no, it won't line up. So, what I have to do now is uh, connect the cables and do my best to remove or uh, shift this screen over without the screen dropping out and things falling apart on me, which might be a bit of a feat. Okay, I got it. Right. I will also need, oh, silly me. control panel sorry kicking you about now this has got to be put in also this takes out standby Hmm, okay. I'll have to look back over the video for which to see which is the correct one. I'll go with this one first because I think that was up there. Let's see what happens.
Okay, I have the unit there uh, switched on. Um, signal injected into it. Uh, and I'm going to just show you what I'm talking about by tabs. Um, the tabs themselves give a lot of trouble in a lot of screens. So you can get this bit out. These are the tabs here that run down to the actual screen itself from this other board that's sitting on top of the screen that's mounted on the screen going along. And the control logic board is connected to this board. Then this board here sends it off down these little cables here, tabs. And then tabs are bonded to that PCB. They're not soldered and they can come loose. And sometimes by just pressing them like that, you will get a problem. They do get quite hot. I've actually seen these cables here um, where you see the uh, lines, little copper lines going down. I've seen them short across the one with an arc. It's rare, but I've seen it. And I think I've seen it a bit of a... There you go. Did I see something there? There we go. Make sure I'm not touching something else. I always find it to be this one for some reason or the top left one. And it's looking that way. See, the new control logic board didn't uh, do anything for the fault. We still got the fault. chip there but I've never seen this board give trouble it's always been these tabs they do get quite hot and I'm barely touching that and I can see like anything that's got loose connection as soon as you touch it It works. Come along here, that's no effect. No effect. But yet, over here it does. So we got a tab problem with this. That would mean a new screen and uh, cost of screen for this uh, would be uh, just too much for the value of the unit and uh, I'm afraid it's going to have to go back to the customer unrepaired. Um, the cure that I've seen on the larger screens what they've done is they've got little pads and long strips of pads and they mount on top of these um, you see am I getting this uh, you'd stick it on that faulty one and where the steel frame goes on there you got steel frames the steel frame goes mounts on the outside of the screen and it's a, a thickness it's like um, it compresses in between 
the frame and the board and it pushes the pad against that board creating a connection but I found it, it works for a while and uh, it's back with the same problem again I've never had any success with it um, could be I'm doing something wrong but I've heard uh, uh, technicians out there saying that they, they had success with it but they're not going to tell you if they didn't succeed with it it's uh, See now, Okay, I hope that uh, is some benefit to someone out there that they don't waste money. Like uh, I've wasted uh, some money on a, a control logic board, uh, but uh, the fault wouldn't appear in the beginning, and it did look like a, a control logic board with a blank screen. But uh, it could be two faults. Uh, this is the problem. You could have a, a control logic board uh, fault as well that's going blank, and then it could also have this other problem as well uh, built into it. Uh, thanks for watching.